Bueno. Check me out, y'all. Hello, and welcome back. My power went down when uh, I was uh, showing off Pop! OS. So, I have to redo that whole part. And you're gonna join me. And it will be fun. So, Pop! OS is a... Oh, I can, I can just get it to start first. So, Pop! OS is made by System76. And System76 is a OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer. Or, as you would know it, like, there's, uh, they're like the Linux equivalent of uh, Dell, HP, Lenovo. Like, they, they are like the na uh, one of the name, uh, name brands for Linux computers. That comes with Linux pre-installed. So, they make their own hardware. And they make their own operating system that they put on that hardware. But they also have it available for everyone else to download. Like, hey, if you don't have the money to buy our operating... Uh, buy our laptops or computers. No, no problem, you can still get the Pop! OS experience on your own computer. And we will still support that. So this is the Pop! OS installer. And this thing you can't just click inside it and start typing, sadly. So you have to actually scroll to select your keyboard. And we're gonna have a clean install. So if you want to try out Pop! OS on your own laptop, you will have to turn off Secure Boot in the UEFI. So, if you don't know how to do that, and I may, I will use UEFI and BIOS as the universal interchangeable term, uh, you have to go into your computer's BIOS, because most people actually know what the BIOS is, and you have to turn off Secure Boot. What Secure Boot does is that it um, uh, it requires that the bootloader for every single operating system you run is signed with a cryptographic key. And Pop! OS, because they focus mainly purely on their own hardware, they don't sign their bootloader. Because they want they they want to, uh, they want everything with their computers to be open. You can do whatever you want with them. You don't have to jump through hoops to get things working. So on a Windows computer, all all the bootloaders for the operating systems are signed. Anything that is newer than Windows Seven has a signed bootloader. So you need to. Uh, t go and turn off Secure Boot. It will not damage anything on your computer. It will just turn off uh, turn off the requirement of uh, having the bootloader signed, and then Pop! OS will install fine. After you have installed Pop! OS, you can do a few steps to uh, sign the bootloader and sign like the uh, Lin uh, the Linux kernel and things like that, but. Um, the majority of people don't do that. They just turn off the secure boot and, they're de and then they're done with it. And Pop! OS, I think, is the only the only distribution in our list of distribution uh, distributions that we're going to go through that does not have a signed bootloader. So... But I wanted to show it off because Pop! OS or System76 does a lot 
of fantastic work in the back end of their operating system so you you have um, if you have a computer with nvidia graphics and intel graphics on a laptop the pop os operating system will let you s switch between the intel graphics and the nvidia graphics and you can even put on something in like a hybrid mode where it switches you know, switches between the two uh, without any problems they also have a built-in tiling window manager which is something i will show you once we actually get into the system the tiling uh, but uh, it's it's essentially a tool that uh, people who are engineers program uh, programmers and people who do a lot of multitasking use in order to get stuff done and uh, they have made that uh, that functionality the tiling functionality available for people who don't want to use a uh, like a bare bones window manager as their whole desktop like i do and I'm really happy that they have done that because it makes it very easy for me to like show people, hey, you can do some really cool stuff with this. And um, uh, this this screen is too small for me to actually show how how it works, sadly. And one, once I have actually installed the system, I will show you how uh, how it will work because I can actually stretch out the screen then because the the system just doesn't have the drivers installed right now uh what's the other thing yeah system 76 mostly just do phenomenal back uh, back end work on their operating system so it's based on ubuntu but it's like newer packages than ubuntu you have uh, a lot of behind the scenes things like the um uh, switching between Nvidia and Intel graphics on laptops, like they it, they have done s uh, some engineering work with that. They have, uh, uh, and they actually had that I think before Nvidia even made it a option in uh, in their driver on Windows, or well they had they had the option there, uh, but. Nvidia required you to do a full-on reboot, and PopOS did not. Uh, what other things do they do? They're planning on making their own desktop environment, which is like the whole desktop, because right now it's just using a standard GNOME, and um, GNOME is like pivoting in a different direction than they want because they let's say they they want to go to the left well popos wants to go to the right so uh and sin since popos is made by system 76 and mainly for their computers you get a oem experience from it you install the operating system and then you reboot and then you get the greeter at the beginning where it's like where it takes you through the steps like hey what language in the keyboard do uh, do you want do you want the uh, location services turned on where are you located uh do you have any online accounts that you want to integrate and uh, who who are you i am me because they they just put this on their systems and just like give them out and there you go start using popos now it will sign me out and sign me into my account that i just made Okay, so I have already gone through installing the drivers in here, and I know that they're not in the uh, software center in PopOS, so I can't just search them up there. So I have to do sudo apt update. This is a good way to actually get into the terminal too. So sudo is the same as run as administrator. apt is a uh, package, uh, package manager command. 
which uh, will do things like uh, check the catalog of programs uh, online and then uh, like download the uh, references for them like hey where can I get these pro uh, programs and update it's the command because I want to update the catalog and then I type in the password and sudo apt install spice vd agent and there we go i need those two things and then i need to do a reboot then i can show you how awesome pop os is pop os is the operating system that i use but i don't use this interface because i uh because i i need some more how should i put it i i need i need some more flexibility and the tiling is not perfect for the amount of windows that i put up on the screen And I could just replace the desktop environment, but like I, I'm more at home in a tiling window manager. So now I just sign in. And Pop OS is specifically made for uh, gamers, programmers, engineers, and people who are into tech. So you get a lot of advanced functions. So like... The terminal is already pinned. Firefox is again here. The pop shop is actually really nice. They actually have some really nice things here. So like if I search for VS Code, I'll find VS Code in here, inclu uh, including um, VS Codeium. Uh, I can find, and like Steam is like front and center here, along with Lu Lutris. Lutris is like a... A helper tool for installing Windows games on Linux. Uh, so, like, you, you get specifically things that are uh, tech related here. So, if you're a tech person, you find yourself very at home in Pop OS, at least from my own experience. And they don't like put things that you often don't need in here, like on, on the applications. These are all the applications you have an Office suite, an email client, a text editor. And everything else is literally, uh, and weather, and everything else is literally just system applications. So you get very few, you know, a few things that are bloat here. You get just what matters. Like power statistics, disks, these are things that you would use anyway. And here's a USB flasher, fonts, a document scanner, a video player, screenshot utility. Oh, cool, we can open extensions there too. Nice. Okay. So the uh so uh here is the desktop. It's very simple. You can like go right click and go to display settings, you get taken straight to display settings, you have a night light built in, you can change the background. Uh I'm not a fan of this background, I'm more of a fan of like this one or this one. Although for a video, this one probably wouldn't work. This uh, this one is also really nice, very supportive. But I also have a like a soft spot for this one. This one is warm and cozy. And then you have this one. Like they they have some really cool. Cool ones. We'll go for this one for the video. Or the stream. And then, uh, so, the the menu here is that you, you can click on activities or press the Windows key, and you'll get taken to this overview of all your applications. So if I have two applications here, I get an overview of them all. You can also drag applications from one, uh, from one workspace to another one. So if if you're not familiar with hotkeys, like Pop OS actually got you covered with that thanks to the GNOME desktop. And you can also move them there through here so like it's very easy easy and it dynamically adds more 
workspaces as you need them. So now I only have two, now I have three, and now I have four. And I can also move them over there and it will remove the ones that I don't need. So, and here you have the traditional start menu. Personally, I do not like that the dock is only available in, in activities. So what you can do, because like the um, experience is not perfect for me, for what I need. So you can go to something called, uh, you can install something called GNOME extensions. So you can go to extens extensions.gnome or gnome dot org and you will have to install a uh, extension for your web browser be it chrome or firefox continue the installation and okay oh yeah also you can go to pop the pop shop and uh, search for um, is chrome in there no not chrome but you, you can uh, Search for Chromium and un-Google Chromium and you'll be able to find uh, Google Chrome like you're used to. <laughs> okay, now that we have installed the extension for Firefox, we can now find a extension. And I like... Uh, I like Dash to Dock. Dash to Dock is really nice for me. So you click on and it will ask you to install and I can install it and you will see I now have the access to the uh, to, uh, to the dock on the side and it will also hide when I have the window close to it. And if I maximize the, uh, the window, I sh should be able to uh, gain access to it by moving my cursor to the left but I never gotten that to actually work on any of my computers. It's probably some kind of... Um, force trigger on it. So if I go here now and go to utilities and extensions, I can actually access dash to dock settings in here. And uh, let's see, I want it to be maybe 20, 24 on the icons, yeah. I want to disable the intelligent hide. I want to shrink the dock. And I want it to be a panel mode and there you go I now have access to a whole panel which is e easily accessible for me now the cool thing about pop OS is that they they have made some modifications to or they have some pre-built in extensions for uh, for the gnome desktop like the pop shell the pop shell is really nice so what I can do there and there is that there's an icon here in the top right uh, right corner where I can click tile windows. And what that will do is that it will tile the windows so that I can actually do tiling like a tiling window manager, which is a tool that a lot of people are in the um, like programming and engineers and stuff. P people love this because it's easy to manage their uh, their uh, windows and they can um, get a lot more work done. They can multitask a lot better. So here I have my main window which is the web browser. I might be doing some term uh, work in the terminal and I have easy access to files so I can actually do drag and drop quite easily. And uh, here's another thing. I can also drag this window and drop it on to the other window. Like this, and I will get tabs. And I can do that same thing with. Uh, I can do that same thing with Firefox. I just need to make sure that it actually hovers over the whole screen. And now I have three tabs here for my programs, and I can also easily just ri rip out one of them and put them on the side. And th this is why I like Popo so much because I actually think about the. Like, how can we make the experience better for users? Hi Rosa, how are you doing? So that that's what I really like with the uh, the Pop OS operating system. They they put a lot of thought into the experience. Uh, 
I don't think there's much more to look at uh, to look at here, really. Because we have gone through everything that is like specific to Pop OS. You have you have easy access to settings. The settings are like nicely nicely organized. Alright, and also if you're tiling the windows and you want one window to still be floating, which is like what you, most people are used to, you can select uh, select a window and you can do Windows G and you will have the window in floating mode and you can just move it normally. And you can press Windows G again and it will pop back in into a grid, uh, slot on the grid. I also wanted to show off the launcher that they have, because you can not only just press the Windows key and just type in the program you want, they also have another specific launcher, which is inspired by things like... Um, uh, what, what is one for uh, for Windows? It's uh, the, the closest thing uh, you can compare it to is Spotlight on, uh, uh, on Mac OS, if you're familiar with that. So, customize shortcuts and... Uh, uh, launch. So I, it already has a hotkey, but this hotkey doesn't work on the Norwegian keyboard, so I just need to put it on something else. I use alt space. So what this does is that I can actually now open, let's say, uh, Firefox. I can just get a launcher open and just open the program. And also, as you also see, I can also open it to just switch between windows quite easily. So, it's a, it's a very nifty tool for that, if you just want quick access to something. And I think that was the last thing, really, in Popos to actually look at. So, the next one is going to be... Kubuntu. Kubuntu is actually more tailored towards Windows users by default. Oh. People are mess messaging me. And I missed the re uh, I missed the boot menu because of that. Whoops. So Kubuntu is uh, more like, it's more Windows-like by default, but... More people are trying to contact me. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so, Kubuntu is more Windows-like, but if you're a power user on Windows, you're gonna love Kubuntu. Because Kubuntu is using a desktop environment called KDE. And KDE is extremely flexible. Everything you see on the screen, you can change it. And you can change it easily. There are people who uses... There are people who, uh, who use uh, K, uh, like the KDE desktop as a... Uh, basis for um, let's try and actually install Kubuntu. Uh, Kubuntu. Uh, let's see, Norwegian. Uh, people are actually using. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna do normal here. No, and I'm gonna not download updates. I need to click back on that. So. Uh, people are using Kubuntu as a basis for making their uh, Linux desktop look like Windows or look like macOS, and people will not be able to tell the difference. Like, seriously, there are people who actually will not be able to tell the difference if you show them an image of it. I have done it several times. I saw someone who made their, des uh, their, their desktop in, uh, in Kubuntu look... Uh, exactly like Mac OS Big Sur, and I showed it to a Mac veteran, and I told him, take a, cl a close look at this uh, image, what operating system are they running? 
And he said, well, it's obviously Mac. It is obviously Mac that they're running. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, HK. So, yeah, if you're a power user on Windows, you'll feel yourself right at home in uh, Kubuntu. Since Kubuntu has like a lot of a lot of power tools by default. And since you can configure everything to be exactly the way you want it. And it's very easily changeable too. Like a lot of people do like KDE because of that. Or KDE being the desktop, while Kubuntu being the Ubuntu distribution that uses KDE as its um, a desktop environment. And the reason I didn't do a minimal install on this is because the Ubuntu installer is a bit weird in the way that it installs a minimal installation. The minimal installation is installed with, by first installing the whole system like a normal installation and then you remove everything that you didn't need. So the, uh, what it will do is that it will then uh, actually install like Kubuntu with like Ocular, VLC, uh, LibreOffice and uh, Kate and Contact and it will then after it's done installing all of those with the system, it will then remove them afterwards, which is a bit stupid, but uh, the minimal install was kind of an afterthought by the Ubuntu developers, so that's kind of the reason why. <laughs> it's almost done, fin uh, done uh, copying the files. Awesome. Uh, we also have quite a few other operating systems, uh, systems to have a look at afterwards. We have uh, uh, Sorin, which has two flavors actually that we're going to have a look at. Followed by, let's see, we're on Kubuntu. We're going to have a look at Elementary OS, which is a operating system that um, uh, Pop OS is actually partnered with, or System76 is partnered with. And I think those are all of them. Because we already had a look at Bungie. At Bungie, I mean. Let's see. We did... Yeah, it's uh, it's Sorin no OS and uh, Elementary OS that are left. After, after Kubuntu. Oh, it's updating. I kind of forgot to untick that. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, I made this stream be a tiny bit longer because I forgot to uncheck check for updates and download updates so one thing I will tell you that by def uh, GNOME which is the previous des desktop that uh, we looked at the one that uh, PopOS uses GNOME has all the designers while KDE the desktop that um, uh, Kubuntu users has all the engineers so you would see uh, you will see a few things that are not consistent 
in KDE applications where like design choices are not consistent with the rest of the system, but they're all their programs are extremely powerful at what they do. Like the Dolphin file manager here is like amazing. It's uh, it has like so many more functions than uh, whichever file manager you find in Linux Mint, Ubuntu Budgie, and uh, Pop OS. So, if anyone has any questions while we're waiting here, I will gladly answer them if you have any, like, technical questions. I can actually go and prepare the next ISO file, really. No, I can't, because we're installing. Uh, <laughs> I thought I was gonna be smart. But I'm, I'm me not smart and me not smart. <laughs> well, thank you. I had a I had a stream earlier today, but my power went out, so it kind of cut off when I was looking at uh, Pop OS. But uh, I covered Linux Mint and Ubuntu Budgie, and Ubuntu Budgie actually impressed me a lot because their their desktop is beautiful, and it it's something you can recommend to someone who is familiar with macOS, and it's something you can recommend to someone who is uh, familiar with Win uh, Windows also. But like they, they're catering a lot to the macOS. Fan, uh, fan base or the macOS users because uh, because uh, they had a global menu where it's like you know where in programs you have like file edit view etc etc at the very 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 top of the program uh, they managed to move that into their like uh, taskbar thing at the top uh, at the top on any application, no matter what uh, what framework it was built in, be it uh, uh, be it KDE or be it GNOME, it just grab uh, grab that uh, uh, that menu bar and just put it at the uh, at the top. And uh, usually that has been a problem in Linux, where it's like it will work for uh, one framework but not the other. And we usually have like two uh, two graphical frame frameworks. We have KD and GTK. Or rather we have QT and GTK. Enjoy your dinner, Rosa. I'll probably still be streaming because it's like three more operating systems to cover. I'm glad you I glad I'm glad you stopped by. Enjoy your dinner. Oh god, it's downloading packages again. I need I need to make sure that I do not Check that box next time.
Yep. Oh. Plant tree start. And next one will be Soaring Core. Yes. So again on all the all the other Linux systems that we have, we can press the down key to actually see what's happening on uh, on the boot. If you're curious if it's the computer hanging uh, hanging or something. Beautiful login screen as usual from KDE. Do I need a driver? Is the question. Do I need a driver or can I just jump straight into looking at the desktop? Oh, we have a driver. And here we go. So, this is very similar to Windows in that uh, you have notifications that come up here. You can click here and you can uh, see status and notifications. And we have uh, access to updates here. We have uh, show desktop. We have a very nice calendar here. And volume. And this is uh, for updates. Funny enough, it was kind of supposed to actually download these. So uh, this is the um, uh, software center, so we can go to um, applications. And we can search for things like uh, Chrome. And uh, here we have Chromium, so we can install that, for example, or Spotify. You can install Spotify. And you can find that here. And, uh, and this is the start menu for, uh, for KDE. If this is too much for you, you can just right-click it, show alternatives, and you can go, oh, I want a more uh, simple start menu, and you will get this instead. Apparently this is more simpler. It's what it was called. Or you can go to a normal application menu, which is like more condensed, like this. Or you could uh, you you could even go full touch mode if you want to and get a dashboard like that. So like it's it's very easy to change it to the way you want it. Let's leave you know, let's leave it at the application launcher. So system settings system settings are organized. You can uh, like th this is too much of a white theme for me. So let's fix that. Go to appearance. And let's go to pre uh, to restart and apply it. And uh, there we go. You can also go to plasma style and uh, you can uh, change that here too. But we could also get new plasma styles here. And like you can uh, find other themes quite easily and just install them. So let's see if we can find the uh, windows for example. Uh, maybe Windows 10? No. So, yeah, people are maybe not that much into Windows here, but what I do know is that they are into Mac OS. KDE is very much used for making Mac OS themes. And close. 
and we now have white sir uh, plasma uh, style so now we have an apple icon here instead and it's like very apple like and i can then also go into here and edit the panel and i can move the panel to let's say the top Hello Jellopy, just looking at some user-friendly Linux distros. Then you can go into decorations and like get the the white servers of those. And uh, there we go. And apply. And uh, we now have the macOS like uh buttons and you can also go here and i think you can adjust where you have them quite easily by literally just visually so i can uh, move the close button to the left like this and now it's on the left and the reason the screen goes black is because uh, virtualization driver stuff yeah now now the close button is there i also i also have the button for I want this window to appear on all the desktops. Yeah, let's move that back to where it's more common to have it. There. And you can also, you can also change the icons too, so that you can get the macOS icons there here too. I wanted to show Windows uh, Windows also, but like the, the Windows themes are ha a bit harder to find, it seems like. Let's go for, yeah, here we go, Maxer. And now I can just go uh, that version we can go for, and now we have the Finder icon and other things too, so you can actually adjust how it looks like we can also go like hey this title bar is a bit too uh, too big so we can adjust the size so it's a lot smaller like that maybe yeah this is this is probably more akin to how it would be on a mac for example But I am not a Mac person, and this is Dolphin. Dolphin is uh, Kubuntu's uh, or KDE's file manager, and it's a lot more powerful than Nautilus because on on Dolphin you can actually view, show panels and terminal, and now you have a terminal that follows you know follows around every everywhere that you uh, move around in Dolphin. So if I go to videos here, and uh, I will get forwarded to the videos folder in the terminal so it makes it easy for a beginner to get into the terminal if they actually need to do things here so i can uh, uh, touch test file dot tx uh, txt and the, te the text file will come here and i can also remove it so you can actually see what uh, what you're doing happen which is very nice So again, like KDE, very, very good for a power, power user, and Kubuntu makes it easy to actually get into that. And as you can see, like you can make it, you, you can change KDE easily to be the way you want it. And they, it, like everything you can download more widgets for, they, they even have a widget system on the desktop. Uh, if I, I think I can go to edit. Add widgets. Yeah, here we go. Um, like, let's say I want a binary clock because I, I know how to read binary. I can just add that there and like, he, here's a binary clock. Uh, get a random uh, comic strip on your desktop. You can also have that. If you want to configure it, I want to see the hard drive space and I want to, I don't know, have a digital clock on there. Like, it, you can, you can customize Kubuntu or KDE to be 
yours. And you can do it very easily. So if, if you like to have a lot of dials and nubs, you, you can start with uh, Kubuntu and you, you will be happy with that. Next up is another uh, another uh, Linux distribution that is actually tailored to be specifically for Windows people. Like the it, it's specifically tailored towards Windows people. It is not as open as Kubuntu and the other ones, but uh, if you do want all the whispang from Sorin OS, you, you do have a paid version of it that you can pay for and download. But wh what they do, uh, do is that they package it in a way that you don't need to configure it as much if you are specifically looking to have a Windows-like experience. Uh, I don't want that, I don't want that, I just want to speed it up. The <laughs> I just want to speed up the ins installation. Erase Ubuntu and uh, reinstall, yes. Oh, sorry, go uh, go back, go back. Erase disk install, sorry, no, yes, there we go. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Continue. <clears throat> Uh, let me look at my list again. Seven. We have seven that we're going through. However, I have already covered before a power outage Ubuntu Budgie and Linux Mint. And then I started on Pop OS, and then my power went out. And then I continued on Pop OS uh, on this stream, and now we are. And then I went to Kubuntu, uh, and now we're on Sorin OS, and we only have Sorin left. And I'm saving Elementary OS to the at the very end because Elementary is really beautiful, and I'm trying to alternate alternate between. Uh, something that um, a Windows user might be interested in to uh, to something that a Mac OS user might be interested in. And uh, Kubuntu and Pop OS are kind of like in the middle because like Pop OS does not really fit either a Windows user or a Mac user. While Kubuntu starts out as a similar to Windows experience if you're very into... Yeah, Pop is its own thing. <laughs> And Kubuntu is, like, Windows-ish, but it has a lot of knobs and dials, and you can make it look literally like macOS if you want. And you can... Like, someone has made a... a perfect theme for Kubuntu or KDE to look like macOS. And I took a picture of that, showed it to a macOS friend of mine who has used macOS for ages and he has also used Linux and Windows and I asked him take a close look at this uh, this picture tell me what operating system is it and he says it's obviously a, a macOS system there's no way that that is a Linux system and I told him that is KDE that's a that's a Kubuntu system with KDE on it and he's like no fucking way. Um, Sorin is more like, hey, we're going to be a Windows replacement. We are aiming to be similar to Windows. Kind of like how Linux Mint is like, 
were similar to Windows, but were kind of just like more traditional. we like traditional desktops, but we're not going to be a Windows replacement. Meanwhile, Sorin is aiming for, like, hey, if you come from win uh, Windows, you might be at home here, because, like, everything, well, a lot of things are very similar. And we actually use Sorin OS at the library at my work. And the library computer there, like, uh, that died one day just completely, and... Uh, Nobody had any backs uh, backups of anything on it, and I was just like, okay, well, I'm just going to install Sorino, uh, Sorino OS on it and uh, just set up uh, ButterFS on it with uh, snapshotting. And now it's like, as long as the hard drive doesn't die, if people mess up that computer, I can just roll it back to literally the last week or something like that, which is really nice. And Sorin also provides remote management tools for uh, corporations and ed education so you can actually remotely manage all your uh, all your Sorin computers in your network so their aiming their their aim is to actually just be like a windows replacement essentially there's no uh, <laughs> you can't say anything else after you have seen the desktop the desktop power does use gnome but it's a very 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 customized gnome And uh, they do have a light version of their own uh, of their own uh, system. The light version uses a different uh, desktop environment called XFCE. But again, they have tailored it to be pretty much identical to uh, to Windows. And I'm gonna show both of them. So this is Sorin OS light. Uh, sorry, this is Sorin OS Core, uh, which is essentially the one that you would just download and put on any computer, really. And uh, this is what would replace Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8. Yeah, J and Jalopy, you can probably already tell, like, they, they're they using GNOME. So, how are you, Jalopy? It's been a while since we have chatted. Well, alive is good. Oh, how's the um, truck project going? Ooh. Well, it will be interesting to see if Sorin has uh, virtualization drivers pre-built in. Uh, let me actually check, uh, change to the next ISO so that's ready to go.
A right to left sonic drill. I have no idea what a RTL SDR is, so... <laughs> I just use my imagination. You're welcome. So, this is Soren's, like, customized... Uh, uh, login manager. It looks beautiful, the changes that they have done to it. Oh, software defined radio, okay. So, this is Soren OS. Uh, I hate the light theme, we're gonna change that immediately. But th this is the start menu. They're using their own version of the Ar uh, Arc GNOME extension. And I want to go to appearance and uh, sorry in appearance. There we go. So here we can go to theme. I want the dark theme, and everything is now dark, like we all like it. Yeah, I know it. it like as I said, they they're tailoring this to be a Windows replacement. So you can. Uh, also change it so that uh, this thing shows icons instead. I mean, uh, sorry, it shows uh, actual, like, normal Windows windows. Or you can make it into a tablet-friendly OS like this. Oh. Oh, there we go. It just changed a lot of things. So now it's like more tablet stuff. But uh, like this is probably how you would see most people uh, people see it. So yeah, like they they have they have it easy for you to change the basic stuff. So th uh, now you have everything in the middle, you have the overview, and you have a full screen start menu. Or you can have just have normal icons, where you have a start menu and you have actual like window titles and things like that, remind me later. Or you can have it full Windows 7 style. You can change the panel, I, I want to have it on the top, I want to have it on the bottom. Uh, a dynamic background uh, opacity, so if I move a window off it, it will be transparent, and if I move a window under it, it will not be transparent, so I can also change that. So it's um, off, so it's always solid. To, to be honest, I would honestly reverse that so that it, it, it goes transparent when there's a window under it, because I kind of want to see what's under, under the taskbar. You can... Uh, Make it show the full date, you can make it show seconds and week numbers on the calendar, it's just nor normal GNOME stuff. Left super key is activities menu, or you can make it into the sorting menu, which is how you used to it on Windows. Fonts, the desktop, we have already seen. Title bars on the left, uh, title bar buttons on the left or the right. You can go to privacy, screen lock, all of that. Like, and the software center is again just the normal GNOME, GNOME software where you have the search bar, you can find the. You can find Chromium on here, like usual. The file manager is Nautilus, it's like very clean, very min minimalistic. Like, they like they, they make it look nice and home-like uh, home for Windows users, which is nice. Because like, if you're a Windows user, you kind of don't want to deal with a lot of the things that are like specific to Linux. You will probably have to open the the terminal every now and then. So you probably have to go into probably utilities. Yeah, utilities and terminal and open that every once in a while. Uh, 
Uh, but I don't have an easy way to manage the extensions, so you will have to install... Yeah, so you would have to go in here and install... Um... Gnome Tweaks. Or does it just show up as Tweaks now? There you go, known tweaks, and install. So as you can see, heavily customized uh, gnome sh gnome shell essentially. But they have made it look very nice, though. You can't lie; it looks nice. So yeah, if you want to actually change the extensions, you have to actually install gnome tweaks because they don't let you easily change it otherwise. So there isn't much else to talk about in uh, in in Sorin, really. It's like it looks like Windows. It kind of feels like Windows, but not really. Um, like that's it, really. Like it's it's Windows like. And I forgot to press the boot key. Indeed, I did. Okay, so next one is Sorin OS Lite. Sorin OS Lite is a very minimalistic Sor uh, Sorin in that uh, they use XFCE instead of all the whispang from GNOME. So I'm not going to install this, I'm just going to show you like how it differentiates itself. Like you have all the notifications here, you have a power manager, and like it's it's more basic. Like this is their start menu, it still looks similar to the other one. But once you open settings you will see that this is different. This is not the same. Oh, that's that's nice. They have, they include a boot repair utility. Utility that's actually very handy for um, uh, for uh, new users. That's probably just on the installation file. You know, you know what? Let's let's try the boot repair. Nah, we don't want to update it now. Yeah, it's this. This is literally just uh, grub, boot repair. So that that's actually really nice that they actually include that. It's a very very good way to repair the system if you break the bootloader. And on appearance, you can have uh, sorry, blue dark, sorry, blue light. It's 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 not as like polished as the other core but like this runs on more lightweight systems so you can probably install this on uh, let's see task manager like how much memory does it actually use that does not tell me anything 17% of what Let's just install HTOP and just see. Yeah, it, it, it uses less than one gigabyte. So if you have like 
a computer with four gigabytes on uh, on it, this uh, this will be able to run on that. So that's nice, and that is all for Sorin OS Lite. Like th there is literally nothing more to talk about it. Uh, talk about it. It's a lighter version of Sorin OS, which we already looked at. And you don't have all the whispang for it. Now, the last one we're going to go uh, go and have a look at is um, Elementary OS. And Elementary OS looks beautiful. If like if Pop OS didn't come with like all the programs that I well. Not all the programs, but like, if if PopOS didn't come as clean as it did, I would probably be on elementary. J just saying. I would probably be using elementary OS if um, uh, if PopOS was not as clean as it is after you install it, like application wise. Yeah, I don't know about the programs that you use, Jollopy. I like all the almost all the programs that I use are in the pop shop. Oh, uh, doesn't Blender have their own uh, repository for Ubuntu that you can just use? I'm pretty sure Blender has their own PPA. Oh, you had to build from source. Ugh. Like there was no flat pack or anything either. Because with Blender, it shouldn't be a problem as long as it's like super outdated. Well, uh, missing libraries when you're building from source, you probably you're probably missing the dev libraries for the different things. Like the the funny thing about it is that um, uh, when you're building, yeah, uh, I I'm. I think it was uh, awesome window manager built from uh, source. You had to have uh, uh, libx fixes dev. You didn't need to have libx fixes. You needed libx fixes dev to actually compile it. Hello, there we go. How are you doing? We're finishing off this whole. Uh, here are some uh, Linux distributions that are easy for or user-friendly for people to just get into and try in a virtual machine. And we have gone through six out of seven now. And this is number seven. So I've I've covered 
I covered um, Linux distributions that are like um, easy for or user friendly for a Mac person to get into and uh, Linux distributions that are easy for a Windows person to get into and we have looked at like both both sides and also some in between uh, Ubuntu Budgie is kind of like in between but they have a amazing desktop but uh, like Ubuntu Budgie has the Ubuntu Budgie team has put a lot of effort into how the Budgie desktop works for them so they they really impressed me like they have this global menu for uh, for Budgie that actually works with uh, with uh, GTK and Qt applications like I I remember when I used global menu like years ago that was a big problem like oh uh, global menu in K uh, KDE only works on KDE applications and global menu in uh, unity or gnome only works with gnome applications you couldn't make them work together so I was like very impressed that I have actually managed to actually get that working Because I actually went ahead and actually installed the KDE application inside uh, Ubuntu Budgie, uh, Budgie and opened it and I was like, oh, uh, the, uh, the global menu actually works there. So what we have looked at is Linux Mint, Ubuntu Budgie, Pop! OS, Kubuntu... Uh, Sorin OS Core and Sorin OS Lite. And the only reason I didn't show KDE Neon is because KDE Neon requires some special program to rerun after you have done your updates. And I'm like, yeah, that's not user. That's not user friendly. Like I want, I want this to be user friendly, and I want it to be Ubuntu based. So that people, if people have any problems with it, they can just Google it and just include the word Ubuntu in there, and they will find find things that are re mostly relevant to their distribution instead of going like, "Hey, this thing is Arch based. This thing is Fedora based. This thing is Red Hat based. This thing is like Gentoo based." Like, they don't know what that is. Just use what most of the people have used up up over the time and the thing that is like mostly used for both enterprise and consumer which would be anything that is ubuntu based because ubuntu was huge in around 2007 to about 2012 and 16 2016 like all the way up there like they were huge a lot of people in the Linux space were actually using them, and you would find people actually asking questions on uh, on the internet, and they would get help and stuff like that. So you actually have a archive of help that is relevant for any Ubuntu operating system. I mean, any Ubuntu dis uh, based distribution. Hence, why I was like, okay, the user friendly uh, distribution had has to be Ubuntu based. Like, makes sense, right? And elementary OS is specifically tailored towards Mac users because uh, the whole design, uh, the whole design language is literally Mac, 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 Mac. And they do a phenomenal job, and they have their own custom, uh, custom desktop environment specifically for it, which looks really nice. Yeah, ele the elementary team is fantastic people. 
Same with the po uh, Pop OS team in System76. The Kubuntu team are, all, are also amazing. The Ubuntu Bud uh, Budgie team, they're also great. The, the Sorin developers, I don't really know that much about, but uh, I do know that they started out with like, hey, we want, we want to make Linux more user-friendly and I can get behind that. We want to make it more user-friendly to the average Joe or average Bob or average human. So Sorin has like always pushed hard at like we want it to be familiar. We want it to be uh, be something you're used to. And since ma ma the majority of people are used to Windows, let's make it Windows like. And you can pay for for their version that is like Sorin OS Ultimate, which will let you with a single click turn your Sorin OS to look into look like like mac os like if you're willing to spend money you can do it there so this is elementary os elementary os is beautiful i want a night a uh, night light on oh actually no that, that's a night light so this is elementary os you have a bar at the top which has like applic so you have a bar at the top which has applications it uh it does not trigger with the um, Windows key. You have a calendar. You have music, you have a network, you have uh, notifications, and you have the power buttons. How do we open the launcher here since this actually... Uh, it does not tell us how to open the launcher. Uh, applications menu. Oh. It's literally just a Windows key and space, which is nice. And as you can see here on elementary, the close button is on the left side, just like on Mac. While you have a maximize button on the right. You have a multitasking view, which is very similar to how spaces work in, the, uh, in Mac. So I can now like go here and open the calendar and I can like it, it, it is exactly how you would expect it. Um, I wonder, uh, let's see, grab the whole screen, no. Okay, so it's literally just the arrow keys while holding down the Windows key. Intuitive. And you can maximize, minimize. Like, it's... And the system settings, it's very Mac-like, again. Like, it's categorized the same way it is in Mac, essentially. So, if if you're a Mac user, you'll find yourself very much at home by default in uh, elementary OS. And if, if you also paid attention to it, they actually do have some uh, similarities with System76 because elementary OS, the elementary OS design team is partnered with System76. And here's another thing, just like I think Linux Mint does this, I know Sorin OS does this, is that whenever you use sudo, and it asks you for a password, you can actually see what you're typing in. So you can actually just see that, hey, there's actually some feedback here. On the char uh, characters. So uh, the app center is the exact same one that is in Pop! OS. And you can update all here, you have... Uh, I wonder, is it... Yeah, oh. And here, here's the here's the cool thing about uh, elementary OS is that they support supporting developers, so you can actually like, hey, in order to download this, you have to donate to the developer. Uh, can you do zero? I wonder.
Yeah, you can do zero, but like, hey, we want you to actually support the developers. So, like, you have you have the option to download for free if they allow uh, allow it, but uh, as you can see on Eddy, it it, it it like, hey, would you like to buy the uh, buy this for five dollars? And Eddy is a nice application uh, package installer. And it's like it's uh, it's the um, equivalent to G Debbie. So that's nice. That's nice. And if I click here now, yeah, I can add my card information. I actually, pay f for Eddie, and it this money will go directly to the developer, which is something that I'm really happy that they have done. And here's the thing: Eddie is distributed directly from GitHub. And added to the uh, to the app center, which is really nice. Okay, let's go for to the settings and see if there's anything specific here. Let's see, is there anything we want to do? We want to change. Am I blind? Applications probably no. Um. Oh, desktop and appearance. Okay. So that's nice. Desktop, appearance. I want. Wow. Panel translucency. Okay. Window animation stock. I was kind of hoping for a dark mode, really. Like. That, that's something that is actually missing here. It might be just them and missing something. But yeah, it doesn't seem like they have a dark mode, which is interesting. And... Yeah, there's no dark mode. Like, there, there's no themes or anything. Huh. Interesting. Well, also this uh, this light theme is not the worst. I have seen way worse. I have seen way, 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 way worse. Okay, so let's see, what is accessories, graphics, video system tools, files, and they are using... Their own version of Nemo? I'm not entirely sure. Like, it looks... this looks different, it looks... Is it Nemo they're using? No, it's neither. Not Nautilus or Nemo. Huh. Yeah, this is- I think this is a custom build of something. Well, let's find out what they're using. Uh... Let's find out what they're actually using. System tools, files. 
it's literally just a custom version of their own of it's a custom version of Nemo or um, Nautilus essentially it seems like or it's their own thing to uh, or it's literally just their own thing could be their own thing too because like there's there's similarities and very stark differences between both Nemo and Nautilus so it could also just be their own thing But as you can see, very Mac inspired. E even the file manager is very Mac inspired. So yeah, I think I think any Mac user will probably be at very at home in elementary OS. And as I said, their their desktop actually does look very very nice. My question is, how would you get a dark mode in there? Okay, so apparently there is something in system settings. Uh, Okay, so apparently... You need to install something called Elementary Tweaks. Because there, there is a built-in dark mode, apparently. Uh, which elementary OS is this? This is five. Okay, so dark mode comes in elementary uh, elementary OS six, and this is uh, elementary OS five. So currently, the only way to enable it is by. That's a nice warning. Hey, this this thing that you're pasting in is going to run as administrator. Uh, administrator, are you sure you want to actually run this? That's actually a very ni a nice feature to actually warn people that, hey, the thing you're pasting in is actually going to run that as administrator. Are you really sure you want to paste this? Like, watch. Oh, never mind. It doesn't ask again. Okay, so what I'm doing now is that I'm adding a custom repository for a specific program that we'll need to actually turn on dark mode. And it's literally just copy-paste. Oh, does it, does it integrate into the menu itself? Nope. Oh. Mm. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm removing that and I'm removing that now I'm cleaning up Oh, it only has that, okay. How much is that going to remove? Uh... Okay, so this is probably not going to work then. <laughs> well, okay, there's no dark mode for elementary OS right now. So, I think the only thing we can do then is... Uh, okay, so sudo apt install... Just use Alex appearance, I guess. I mean, it would probably work. Yeah, mem mem membrane keyboards. I don't like them. I I don't like them. Customize look and feel. Will I be able to? No, I will not. That sucks. Okay. So 
there's no dark theme in elementary until their elementary OS 6 releases. Currently they're on elementary OS 5. So there is no dark mode for now. Well, I think that will conclude this stream. Let's see if we can raid someone. Let's see who is currently online. Chris Griffin is online, let's raid him. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye.